Hey everybody, it's Bill, SitRep6, and you're watching a SitRep review. Today, we're reviewing the, the Army Painter War Paints Air Starter Set. In the starter set, you get 12 paints, a bottle of primer, and because I got this from a certain supplier, I also got an, a bottle of airbrush medium. So you can mix any of these standard Army Painter paints and make them airbrushable. What do I think about this? How does it work? Am I sold? Stay tuned right after this. Hey, this is Bill again. We're back with the Army Painter War Paints Air Starter Set. Like I said in the intro, this is a starter set that you can order from War Painter, or excuse me, from the Army Painter, the War Paints Air Set, or other retailers and suppliers. Obviously, support your local game store if at all possible. In this set, it includes 12 base colors. Uh, you get matte black, matte white, green skin, a green. Um, I'm going to throw my glasses here so I can read a little easier. Uh, dynamic yellow, pure red, leather brown, barbarian flush, ultramarine blue, plate mail metal, alien purple, skeleton bone, and a uniform gray. And obviously all the colors do match the Army Painter paint set, which is right here. I have the complete paint set right behind me. Yes, my paint table is a complete mess. Don't judge me. So this is the box it comes in. There it goes. List all the colors right there. So let's take a look inside. I've already pulled the inserts out and, and for full disclosure, I paid for this set myself. And so everything that I'm going to spew out of my gab this afternoon is of my opinion and is representative of the SitRep podcast and our reviews. Uh, we give you honest reviews. We spend our money so you don't have to if it's not for you. But let's get into this. Is this worth it? To be honest, I have typically been a Vallejo or Badger stylized airbrush paint set. Um, but we'll see what these these are like, okay? And I have used some of these. I actually used the uh, certain colors when I was painting up the uh, British soldiers for our Rourke's Drift game, which part two will be coming out here in about a week. Uh, a little bit more editing than the first part, but uh, they'll be coming out soon so you can find out what happened in the battle. But let's get back to this. So inside the box, you'll get two trays. So the first tray is just like this. There's actually a booklet. It's like a how to paint booklet. It's typical of all the Army Painter sets. And you get a big bottle of matte gray primer and a couple other bottles. I'm gonna set that tray over to the side. And here we have the Dynamic Yellow. Let's see if you can see that. And I do have auto focus on tonight, guys. So bear with me as it focuses in. And then we have um, green skin. So they're green. Let me see if this helps at all. Okay. So other than that, you get another tray with 10 other bottles of paint uh, with all the colors that I uh, told you about. And then again, because I got an initial offering, if you will, from a supplier, I was included a bottle of their airbrush medium, which you can add to any of their war painter sets to get uh, airbrushable. So, what do I think about the paints initially? Uh, I, I like dropper bottles, let's be honest. I'm a, I'm a dropper bottle fan versus pots. Um, all these come with metal ball bearings in them, uh, which I typically add ball bearings to my paints. Um, so it is nice to see that these have them in there, which is nice. All right, typical paint bottles, you know, a dropper, these are uh, what, 3.5 ounce, I believe is what they are. If I'm not mistaken, ounces. Okay, so 18 mils. And of course, as always, they're all made in Denmark. Uh, that's where the Army Painter is headquartered out of. So, shall we roll in? All right, so I have an airbrush here. As you see behind me, I have my airbrush booth, but I'm not going to use that today uh, just because we're going to do some demos. But I am going to pull some miniatures um, here that we'll use if I can get it to focus on it. Um, it's not primed. We'll go ahead and prime it. So I'm going to grab 
an airbrush here. This airbrush is part of that compressor airbrush that I bought off of Amazon around Christmas time. Okay. So first things first, let's give the primer a good shake and we'll see how the primer goes. All right. Consistency, does it look right? I'm not spinning this out with the medium. I'm just doing it right out of the bottle. Because I should be able, it says you can prime your models indoors. Ultra matte. I'm going to use this box here just as a spray guard. Now remember, when you're airbrushing, start your airflow, then pull back on your paint, and when you let go, we'll release the paint, but keep the air flowing because that'll prevent needle fog. Okay? So we'll go ahead and prime the sky up. And I know we're a historical channel, but I wanted to use Kind of one of these oversized fantasy miniatures versus a historical, uh, because outside some prime colors in the in the starter set, unless you're doing like Napoleonic or something, it goes on pretty good. So let me get the undercuts that I may have missed. And then we'll move on. Okay. That's done. I'm going to grab my spray pot. And my cleaner. I use the uh, airbrush cleaner from Awada. It's my preferred. So I'm going to go ahead and zap out the rest of this paint. While this dries. It dries actually rather quick. And it's nice, even coverage. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me see if I can do it for you. Unfortunately, the, with the autofocus on, it doesn't want to play nice, but we'll go from there. All right, so. Let's go ahead and we'll just use that as a stand. Take that over, throw in the garbage. You know what? Let's go ahead and give them uh, ultramarine blue. So let's see. I'm going to shake this. I'm going to shake this about a minute. Thereabouts. See how well it mixes together. Okay. And I'm just gonna use five drops. One, two, three, four, five. All right, we've got our blue. So what I'm looking for, is it gonna give me even coverage without being too runny or wet? What is the coverage like under certain primers, right? Okay, coverage is pretty good. All right, so.
probably turn on the air volume on my airbrush. And another thing is if you pull back and you're spraying and you just let go, what's gonna happen is you get splotches. Here, I'll demonstrate it for you. So, pull back, I've got it wide open, see that? And I let go. The next time you do it, see if I can get it here. You'll get splotches. So you'll get splotches of paint, okay? All right, let me clean that. Okay, all right, so we'll go to plate metal, plate mail metal. All right, we'll give that about a 30 second shake. So far, this is what it looks like here. I'll give you a better picture here in a second. Okay. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, because we've got a little bit more area to cover. Okay, all right, let's go to town. It's a nice coverage. I oversprayed, unfortunately, there, because it, it really, at point, the airbrush struggled to push that chain mail through. I'm gonna actually add a little bit of medium, just two drops, and see if it'll pack it. Almost there. Yeah, I'm gonna have to redo that blue. No problem. Easy change out. The paint cleans up pretty good. All right, so let me uh, clean that up. And then I'm gonna switch over. And actually, I'm gonna go for one of the harder colors, red. Or do I do yellow? Let's do yellow. Yellow is one of those hard to paint colors. All right, yellow. Here's gonna be a test of the coverage capacity. You give it a nice good shake. Okay. One, two, three, four. And we'll do a couple more. Okay. Bottles have a nice dropper. They, they seem to give 
accurate measurements. Now, yeah, if that's any indication. Uh, Okay, all right, here we go. I'm gonna redo the uh, cloth areas in yellow. Let's see how the coverage is. Coverage is pretty good. For your yellow, I went over the blue that was there. Turn this down a bit. There we go. Not bad. Coverage for the yellow. It definitely needs a couple coats, but that's fine. Nice thin coat. I don't know if you see that yet, but I'll show it to you here closely in a minute. So the important thing is to make sure that your airbrushes are clean. Um, if you don't clean them well, it's a nightmare. And make sure you use, I prefer a white paper towel or some kind of white, because that way you can tell when you get all the paint pigments out, right? Like in here, all done. All right, so that's clean. And now after I clean everything and I know it's clean and the barrel's clean, I'll get no color coming out of this. I take a little bit of Badger needle juice and I put a drop right in the pot and one in the barrel and that helps lubricate the needle. So you just got to remember to run that through, maneuver your and it keeps things well, the O-rings in there, there's little tiny O-rings in your barrel between your needle to help seal it. You just make sure you've got that done. And then I can put that away. Get rid of that. Close this up. Get this up. Get this off my hand. That's garbage. Put these back over here. All right, so. Looking at the model, the. The paints worked. I mean, they work. Let me do one other thing. We'll do a little bit of, find if, see if I have an extra brush sitting right here. Do, let us use this. I'm gonna take some of this light tone. Uh oh, I've got a clog. I always save my old airbrush needles because I make perfect plungers for cl unclogging bottles. And we're just gonna throw this over this guy. So um, I was watching somebody's other observation about another paint set we'll be reviewing when we get one, and that's the new speed paints that they've got coming out. And that um, there was an issue with some of the paints coming off of different models. I don't know what, um, what was I trying to say? Uh, surface type, you know, if it was plastic, PVC, metal, et cetera, resin, um, they were using.
because they're saying that you know, if they mix it with a different type of paint, the paint was coming was like coming off. I I don't know that for a hundred percent. Um, just because, you know, it was like uh, a quick article or something I, I caught somewhere. Uh, I can't even say where I saw it, but we'll we'll dig into it. So I'm just going to put some of this tone on here. You know, obviously their Army Painter tones have a brownish tinge to them versus like a Nun Oil, which is black based. Um, here's what I, I like. I like the Army Painter system because I think it's well thought out. Um, the paints are good. They're nice, heavily pigmented. Um, I bought the, what is this set called? The uh, full range set when it first came out. And there's a ton of colors I don't use just because of the type of miniatures that I, I typically, you know, I, we're doing historical, right? They're, I'm not going to use some fuchsias and pinks. Now, if you're doing Napoleonics or something, that's cool. Where's my water jug? Water jug? Where'd you go? <sighs> I'll clean off in a minute. All right. So now what I like to do, is I don't... I want it to go into the recesses, but I don't want it to, you know, make my mini look muddy, if you will. So, not bad. Get off the yellow there. I want it to get into the recesses, like I said, but uh, for a quick five minute job, let's see if I can hold that up for you. No. Come on, focus, focus. Doesn't want to focus. It's supposed to be an autofocus. I'll give it a close up here in a minute. But um, all right, so what do I think? For the price point, I think right now I see these bottles individually for like $350 a bottle ish. Um, maybe a little bit more depending on where you order it from or less, depending where you order it from. Um, I got the set for $40. I think it's pretty good for 12 different bottles. Plus, you know, the primer, the primer seems to work very well. Um, the colors are nice and bright and colorful. Um, is the basic set really for military miniatures? Probably not because honestly, looking at some of these colors, I can see the red being used, obviously the gray, Maybe the skeleton, but you know, these are more for fantasy sci-fi miniatures. Um, but I think it does a good job. The, the coverage was good. It flowed out of the, the, without diluting it with medium. It For 99% of it, it flowed pretty well. I, I did think the uh, metallic, this plate mail metal air, really needed to have some medium. It needed to be thinned out a little bit more. Um, but yeah, not too bad all in all, uh, you know, for a quick here, I threw a mini together to put on a D and D table, you know, as an NPC character or somebody's player character. Is it awesome? I could have spent a lot more time on it. You know, I threw down a few colors. Um, but really the, the test of this was how does this compare to some Vallejo paints? <sighs> Game airs, right? So um, I'm a big fan of Vallejos, but that I think the consistency, so let me take this one, and I don't have a real flush here, so I'll have to compare it to this one. I didn't really shake that one, so. The consistency is pretty much the same. Um, So here, here's the bottom line, guys. Is the the Army Painter War Paints Air uh, sets paints uh, a good value? I think they are um, for the price that they're asking for. It's a good value. Does it cover well? Again, I think it does. Uh, is it easy to use? 
I think it is. I didn't have to really thin out other than, you know, putting a little bit in with the uh, the plate mail. I think the metallics are and that. That's, I think, pretty much the same for anything. And then um, didn't clog up my airbrush. I didn't get dry needle. Again, a lot of that comes down to technique. Um, I, I still find myself with bad habits. Sometimes I will not continue air after I stop my paint flow. Um, so, but, and you'll, I'll catch myself more doing that when my needle starts clogging up. I, I, that's when I really notice it. Like tonight, I didn't really seem to have a problem with that, which is nice. And I'm gonna attribute some of that to the paint it's, itself. Um, it, it didn't instantly dry coming off the needle. It, it hit the surface like it's supposed to. It, it, it adhered to the surface. It did pretty good coverage. And um, yeah, I think it's worth it. It's a good set to add to your painting arsenal, if you will, um, versus some of the other paints. Is it better than Citadel's or Vallejo's? I don't say one's better or worse than another. It really comes down to technique and how you use them. Um, I have used the medium in regular uh, Army Painter paints when I did some of the Zulus, and it worked just fine. If you follow the instructions, and here's a big thing. I, I'm a big believer in that if you're going to use regular paint lines to be airbrush, use the median that's recommended or, or the same manufacturer. I put some different type of thinner or medium from a different company. It was more of an airbrush art supply into an Army Painter Red, and it turned into like a gel. So obviously there was some kind of chemical reaction there. So definitely if you're going to take base colors, mix them with the proper mediums. Uh, it'll save you a lot of headache in the long run. So for this, we give it the, uh, I'm gonna give it four stars out of five. Um, for value, yes. For ease of use, yes. Cleanup, yes. Um, the color range is really good. The only reason I'm not giving it that fifth star is because you do have to thin some of them, but that's like all of them. So um, good solid set, good for beginners. They have excellent uh, literature that comes with them. Follow along and they have good stuff on their website. So this is Bill for the Set Rep Podcast. This has been a review of the Army Painter War Paints Airbrush, excuse me, Air Starter Set. We'll see you on the next one. Take care.